Yo! Let's go! Anyone else remember Spike TV's one true gift to the world? MXC? This show was the tits. Hold on to your nuts. This show was a fire mixtape. Let's spin the made up wheel. The made up wheel is a made up wheel that I made up while making things up for this made up show. Boom! Now that's a segue, baby. Wow! Enjoy! I want she takes a fetter line drive to the head. Where? Well, I, oh! oh, and Flea takes a cheap shot to the head and he's down to the net. That was completely unsportsmanlike. Yeah, no. The main footage for MXC is taken from the Japanese reality show Takeshi's Castle, which is a runaway hit in Japan in the mid 80s. Now, the show is hosted by the Count Takeshi Katano, who you may remember from John Tron's Takeshi's Challenge. This is the same guy. For a kid growing up in 2003, this is probably some of the most panty dropping, you know, nipple wetting content I've ever seen. <laughs> and here's Rob Tussin. He was very impressive in the warm up. And... Oh, I don't think he's feeling anything from the neck down, Ken. This was honestly the most anticipated show of my childhood. I'd always watch it sleepovers, condom in hand, just waiting for MXC to come on, just to watch a ton of people eat shit alongside funny commentary. It's genius. There's so much replay value in this one golden shit log that is Spike TV's best show that's ever had. I say that not out of opinion, but out of fact. Uh, Spike TV did not have much good content, but this, this was anticipated. This will go on to live for generations. At least I pray that it does. People actually got hurt in this show, but who's counting? <laughs> Apparently in the 80s in Japan, you could get away with anything. Oh yeah, safety regulations? Yeah, fuck those. Welcome to Most Extreme Elimination Challenge! The key reason MXC works is because of the two commentators, Vic Romano and Kenny Blankenship. They're the only two commentators that actually have a personality in a show. We did that right in front of the network executives. Network executive? That's right. <laughs> Epic prank. I'm the executive. Ken, that's the man who signs our checks. Why didn't he say he was coming? Never say anything to your face, Ken. Why is he dressed like that? Executives do that when they pretend they're normal people. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go take a shit and eat some of these tater tots that I found in the kitchen. Now, while we were on break, we had a little trouble in the prison cafeteria when we ran out of tater tots. Fuck you! But there were a few jailbirds who tried to make a break for it, so Kenny and I had to deal out a little street justice of our own. Nice shot. What you say? Let's go to Gee. No, no, I lay under the glass coffee table and you get under. I'll have to call you back. Goodbye. <clears throat> uh, Gee here. If you thought this show was getting any softer, you better put on a condom because it's only going to get weirder from here. The Guy LaDouche character is one of my favorites. I, I feel like we share a kinship. Oh, no. I I'm losing all my erection. It took me so long, too. <laughs> no matter how many shows try to copy MXC's formula, <coughs> despite the fact that they were sued for blatant copy of the formula of MXC, there is no replacing MXC in general. This show, look at this commentators. These are just two boring ass white dudes telling dad jokes. It's awful. On little courses like this. I want my gi and my MXC. <laughs> Disturbing question. How many of you think execution should be shown on national television as a deterrent for crime, especially for the kids? Hmm? Yes, I am with you, so we're all in agreement. The other fan favorite was Captain Tennille. He was always able to give me wood before the show started. With his demeanor that was given to him by the writers of MXC, he was always able to get the crowd of contestants hyped up with his pep talks that would always relate to that of the episode's competitors. If you want me to. <laughs> well, that's very I'll nice. touch him. I'm the Captain Jasmine. Let me, Let me smash. Boy, that feels so nice. <laughs> but, but this could be a great show. I can feel it in my bone. Oh, I'm a dirty man. <clears throat> Let's go! So each of these characters were fan favorites and they had some type of personality to back the show, but contestants still had a weird amount of monsters and obstacles to face. <laughs> Sancho! By our very own missing link, Golden Shower Boy! A blood blister! There's the purple package! The dreaded blue veiner! And the chrome boiler! <laughs> So here's one of my favorite games, Circle Jerkers. Stay in the circle without getting jerked out by one of our world-class circle jerkers. This man has drawn the yellow ball, so he gets to take on the golden shower boy. It's time to do 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 A good matchup, and look at that. There's some excellent jerking going on down there, Ken. Let's see what happens. The golden shower boy has a steady stream of power going on there. They're trying to give each other that classic double wedgie tug. Oh, and put the seat down. Amazing Red is done. Is your dick hard yet? 
Mine is. That's right, three inches of underwhelming pleasure. But if that doesn't do it for you, try out this next game. What's everyone's favorite game? Hand job. Hand job. Ready? Finger it. And there's R. Kelly who goes out to the number 10, but of course the answer is 18. <laughs> Got him. So this is why MXC is probably my favorite anime of all time. This is an anime that got fan service right. Now the object here is for each contestant to grab a set of footwear and race across a giant cookie sheet, which has been super preheated to 450 degrees. Hey, look, Vic, that guy's heating up his lunch at the same time. The most popular minigame on the show was probably Boulder Dash. They would always end every episode with it, sometimes, and it's changed throughout the seasons. But here's it summed up in about one Vine clip. Run. Ooh, you suck! As tradition in all MXC episodes, every episode will end with Kenny Blankenship's most painful eliminations of the day. So I present to you my tribute to that. It's time for Kenny Blankenship's painful eliminations of the day! And starting out at number 10. And that is Turd Burgle, who picked the wrong hole and drew mud. At number 9, Double D Knob Gobbler Naomi Pickett ends up with a wet backyard. Number 8, Chubby Girl Pageant winner Jamie Schumer puts her face directly <laughs> in that big brown log. <laughs> Coming in at number seven, <laughs> dead supermodel Claudia Stiffer, who went brown and drowned. Number six goes to Gregory Pecker, who taps it from behind and receives mud. Number five goes to double lead bunghole corker Peter Ziebenberger, who uses his face to get it done. Number four, thruster bust advocate Courtney Cuck, pelvis first into the runoff from Joe Brown's extra private chamber. Number three goes to Barney Babaganoosh, oh! tearing his third leg hamstring and going face first into the presidential flushings from Air Force One. Number two goes to self-absorbed depressed cheerleader Rosie Palm. Says she's used to taking it on the face, but that's gonna leave a mark. And my most painful elimination of the day goes to... Uh, Watch what he does. Uh, uh, oh no. Uh, Wow, I can't believe it's over. Well, actually, Ken, there is still one battle left. Are you ready for the ride of a lifetime? If there's anything I'd really want people to take away from this video, it's just a little bit of that nostalgic experience that I get every time I watch this show, and hopefully, maybe you'll be able to experience it too. Get it on. All right, buckle up, my young chump. If you'd like to watch some MXC, it is available on Amazon Prime Video. I will leave a link down in the description below. Oh, I just winged Billy Joel. Die, piano man. Remember, obey the rules of the road, or drive straight to hell! Anyway, what do we always say? Don't be like Spike TV. Remember. Don't get eliminated! Nose nuggets! Excellent! Hit me, baby, one more time.